Hello everyone. We are coming to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. We're here every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time live on the YouTubes and the Facebooks and all over Newegg.com. We're back once again with our weekly look at the world of PC hardware gaming in all its wonderful forms and serious deals on serious tech. So true. On this week's show, we're sharing a killer 2080 build from Thermaltake. Yeah. We're diving into cosplay just in time for uh, maybe some costume inspiration for Halloween. Yeah. And then we're going to be fighting it out in some Soul Calibur 6. All right, smart money, you or me? Who's, who's uh, taking, because you're, you're playing. I feel like we're pretty even on fighting games so far. So I'm, far, yeah. This is this is going to be our good tiebreaker, but you're going to be playing on a PlayStation controller. I know, which is That's always already a handicap a for, me. for me. And I haven't played Soul Calibur since 2. Cool. So I feel like this is going to be another catastrophic showdown. Which means another expert, professional level <laughs> gameplay demo from Trishan One. So bad for the people that yeah. actually know this game mm. well. Just so true. Just smashing your face Give me some fight keyboards. sticks, people. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Keep me on controllers. I suck with fight sticks. So, uh, <laughs> of course, on each episode of our show, we share some extremely time-limited deals you can find on Newegg.com slash Newegg now. Head on over there right now, and you can watch along with us today while you shop. Use the promo codes you'll find on that Newegg Now page, and you'll save some cash. But remember, all these Newegg Now deals expire at the end of the day today, or while supplies last. So if you wait until tomorrow, you will be too late. If you see something you like, save money on it while you can. Right. So uh, let's start things off with some killer laptop deals that we have for you, including the very popular MSI GS65 Stealth Thin. This gaming laptop has a gorgeous design and some serious power with a 144 hertz display, a GTX 1070 GPU, and an 8th gen i7 CPU. You can pick this beautiful powerhouse up for $250 off today. Definitely want to check that out. Yeah, and we also have the Aero 15X from our friends over at Gigabyte with a 4K display and a GTX 1070 for $150 off. Or if you're an ROG fan, we have the Asus ROG Strix Hero Edition with a 120 hertz display mm -hmm. and GTX 1060 GPU also for $150 off. And uh, how about some great pre-built gaming desktops? Yeah. Like the ABS BattleBox Ultimate Extreme, for example. This beastly system has an i9-7920X CPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an ASUS ROG GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. This is a seriously high-end gaming system, and you can get it right now for $100 off. Nice. You can also check out the ABS Fleet, which has an i7-8700K CPU and a 1080 Ti, available for $50 off on that new Egg Now page. And speaking of desktops, we have to talk about the incredible 2080 builds Yo. that have been coming together recently here in this very studio. So, NVIDIA's RTX 20 series GPUs have been pushing the boundaries of what's possible in PC and gaming since they were released not very long ago. Mm -hmm. They've also been front and center in some amazing builds that we've done here. Yeah, and one of the most incredible builds of the year here in the studio has been the liquid cooled RTX 2080 tower assembled with the expertise of Thermal Takes Thermal Mike. Thermal Mike. Yes, this is a truly one of a kind creation featuring custom cooling loops handmade by Mike, who is seriously world class in that area. He's like, so he's scary to watch work when he does that too. Oh my God, I love it. It's inspiring. <laughs> it's so um, awesome. So we've got the whole story behind the build ready to share. So let's go ahead and check that out. Hey everybody, Thermal Mike back here at Newegg Studios and boy do I have a custom PC to show you. Right here behind me I have our custom liquid cool PC powered by an RTX 2080 graphics card and that right there is the new Thermal Take VGTX 20 series RTX 2080 2080 Ti custom water block. Now I had a lot of fun putting this all together so we could be able to cool as we are Thermal Take this awesome Zotac RTX 2080 graphics card. And the Tower 900 was the perfect choice to be able to house this in to get proper cooling, not just for that new GPU, but of course for that CPU as well in this custom dual loop configuration. Now, if you want to learn more, visit our website at thermaltakeusa.com and definitely check out those pre-orders we have already for the new RTX 2080 water block, DIY liquid cooling solutions, and more here from Thermaltake.
So we chose the Tower 900 case because first off, it's gonna be able to support just about anything and everything that you can put in there. I mean, if you have a giant graphics card or you have a high demand for liquid cooling, this Tower 900 is dual loop capable. So being able to house up to two 560 radiators in the back, or 480s or whatever you wanna put in there, you have just about as much cooling as you think you could need to be able to cool something with today's tech and today's hardware. With the case itself uh, being able to pull almost every single panel apart, everything can come out down to the frame, makes it definitely a modder's choice for people that are looking to you know, do custom panels, do something modding, or just you know, painting some accents and stuff on the case. It really gives you a lot of options because most everything that's in there down to the motherboard tray is removable, which makes it easy for installation as well as customization. I've integrated our PR22 D5 pump plus and one of the things I like about the Plus Pump is that it has integrated addressable LED lighting, and that's gonna be all synced up with everything else that's in there. The water block, the fans, and the LED strips. To be able to give something, you know, more one of a kind, and be able to make it customizable with, you know, 16.8 million colors of fun. And then of course with the tube work and everything, I wanted to do something a little bit different. It's just fun to be able to get creative with this. It's a passion of mine to be able to do something like this. I kind of mimic NVIDIA's claw logo. It might not look exact, but I think it kind of gave a little bit of an emphasis on it, and I think it came out great. So what I did here was we're using our pure clear coolant. So it's basically just a transparent clear coolant, which can work in the system. And I usually recommend to change the coolant about every 12 months. But then with a pure clear base color, it allows me to get a lot of options for what color I want to go with for it. With this, of course, the NVIDIA launch, I wanted to go NVIDIA green, and with that we used our UV green concentrated dye. Now with the concentrated dye, the thing I like about it is I can mix it and match it with all the other concentrated dye colors to make a one of a kind color, and or be able to use this in lots of different liquid cooling to be able to get a custom look and get the right color that I want. I gotta say, the thing I'm most proud of probably here is the tube work. It's a big highlight of what I like to do. I mean, anybody can build a system and put it together, but it's how you tie everything together, especially with like the liquid cooling, that can really set the tone for the build and change it drastically. So I think one of the neat things I like about just specifically building in this case and partnering with ASUS is the synchronization. So all of our Thermaltake Plus family products is a part of our TT RGB ecosystem. And with our TT RGB ecosystem, we've been able to partner up with companies like ASUS to be able to synchronize it directly with their motherboard using our TT Sync controller. Now, one thing to mention, the sync controller that we have is a 5 volt addressable LED solution, which is different from a 12 volt solution that you would see where you get just a single color. 5 volts will give you animation, so it gives you just even more immersion into being able to customize your RGB. And of course, with that being able to sync right up with ASUS, you're dealing with one app, one software, one control to be able to set everything up seamlessly. So of course we do love working here with ASUS at Thermaltake. We use a lot of ASUS products and we definitely appreciate their support. We have their X299 motherboard here, which looks great. We got that going with a 7900X Intel CPU and we got some of the new Samsung 970 M.2s in there as well. So plenty of storage, plenty of performance and speed. And of course with Thermaltake to cool everything, it just makes a perfect combination. Now this new Ring Trio fan is basically the next version from our Ring Plus. This actually supports 30 LEDs, 30 addressable LEDs. But one of the things that makes it different and apart from the rest is the fact that it has three different zones. So I actually have a zone in the front, the back, and in the middle of it that I can change different animations and different colors. All 30 LEDs can be a different color, or you can be able to mix and match the different modes and lighting effects to be able to get something really one of a kind. And it doesn't stop there. The other thing that I've really liked about what we're doing next is the new Alexa support. So we've teamed up with Amazon Alexa to be able to offer voice command control as well for this once enabled to be able to set up stuff like being able to switch to any of the 21 different modes that we currently have available now or to just ask the system what the weather's like and be able to see the weather and colors from if it's raining to get a nice blue animation effect to a nice sunny sky or even a thunderstorm with purple and white flashing lights to just give you something unique, something different, something more than just standard RGB.
I think some of the biggest challenges I have is just the new hardware, the new tech. I mean, uh, this was the first time I was able to actually put this water block on an RTX 2080 card. Um, and to be able to do that on camera for the first time, you know, can be a little bit of a challenge, but I have so much fun doing it. So it, it just kind of comes natural, I think, for me. But other than that, I would say just trying to get everything lined up together, putting all the tube work, um, you know, being able to create this kind of a design that I have. Um, and just kind of think of what, you know, what's going to look cool and then just get it all to tie together. Now one thing I can take away from this build is when you're doing liquid cooling, especially if it's your first time, always do your research. Make sure that you have the right products, the right components, everything, the compatibility. It's all going to work together. It's a big investment. It's a large budget, especially for something like this. And the one thing you don't want to have is the challenges of putting all that awesome all together. And uh, when you go to put stuff, there's going to be some, you know, bumps in the road that you may have and you just need to plan for it. Like with the tube work and everything, practice. You know, buy some tube, do some bending before you even get to this point. Being able to kind of figure out how to do a basic 90 can really help you out in those long nights of putting that system together the first time, especially if you've got a heads up if you're going to be doing something like a hard tube type of uh, DIY LCS build like this. All right, everybody, we had a blast here building in this custom PC. Definitely a huge thank you again to Intel, Asus, G-Skills, Samsung, Zotac, and of course Thermaltake to bring this custom PC to life. I mean, I just had a blast. Hope you guys liked the video as far as going through the entire process of doing this custom dual loop liquid cooled PC here behind me. And of course, all these parts you can find here on Newegg.com. And until next time, we'll see you back here at Newegg Studios. Man, that is inspiring watching him do that. It is so cool watching that build come together. I it just like, <laughs> especially with the custom heat piping and stuff, and I still keep taking it back. Huh. There, there, if you want more information, uh, Thermal Mike was kind enough to join us on our mega stream uh, for Intel Gamer Days. Yeah, he's where the best. In the middle of a live stream, he's just ripping the radiator out of a PC, whereas like anytime I've done anything with liquid cooling, like I've got paper towels all right. over my no, build and stuff like that. He just makes it look so easy. Like in, in that video that everyone just watched, he just got that crazy CPU cooling loop on his first try. try. Like I feel like if there's anyone out there that hasn't attempted that, and you're like, oh man, Thermal Mike did it. It looks so easy. <laughs> Don't be fooled. It is not. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of experience that he's bringing to the table. And I know that they want me to mention that the build that it's you just right saw being done is right here over my shoulder. Can we show that live, guys? Let's pick it up. Right there. Yeah, so we've been drooling over this case and this build for, for a couple weeks now. Um, yeah. we, we actually got to see some of the early inception before the 2080 was released as uh, we were working out with uh, Thermal Take on mm -hmm. how to put this system together and just watching it finally come together and then seeing some of the, uh, the the color and design accents, the aesthetic that they put into that. It's really pretty. It's such a remarkable build. Yeah. It, it makes me super jealous. And I, we're gonna talk a little bit about our own PC building woes, but <laughs> I, I'm probably not gonna get that close. So we absolutely love seeing ambitious builds like that one come together. And if you wanna create something similar, everything you need to do it is on Newegg. That's I mean, like, true. this is the place to be. So we have that Thermal Take mm -hmm. Tower, the 900 black tempered glass case you just saw. It's discounted right now on newegg.com slash newegg now. Mm -hmm. So you can you can use that as your as the crazy base of your awesome sexy build. Yes. Uh, we don't have that 2080 GPU discounted just yet. <laughs> no one does. If you're looking to put together an AMD build, we have the Power Color Red Dragon Vega 56 card discounted okay. right now for $50 off. So pair that with the Gigabyte GA-AX370 gaming motherboard for less than $60, and you're halfway there. Sure, that you know. could work. Or if you would rather go Intel, then you can check out the Gigabyte Z370 that we have on that page for less than $80. And you'll need plenty of storage if you're putting together a new build, which is why we have the, uh, the four terabyte Seagate Barracuda Pro HDD discounted for less than $150. Yep. And if you need even more storage than that, you can check out the Toshiba X300, which is a whopping six terabyte drive 
at six terabytes of storage for under, also under $150. Yeah, really so some, cool. some great deals here. Um, and Juan, I know that you picked up a lot of stuff for your personal build uh, from last week's deals. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, I have this bad habit of um, selling myself stuff on the show. You know what, though? Like, I feel so... like this is just the adult version of when you're a teenager <laughs> and you work at your favorite retail store so that you can get discounts and yeah. stuff. That's us with this show. It is. For, although, I've sold myself. So, so much many stuff. things, but yeah. So I, I stocked up on some RAM and uh, nice. another another fast. How much uh, RAM, Juan? Uh, Sixty-four gig of, of super fast RAM. Hell yeah! So that that definitely uh, definitely hit the wallet a little well. bit, but also got myself a nice uh, one terabyte uh, SSD nice. new uh, M.2 drive. So nice. the beginnings of the refresh, because her actual name is Hera. I know we've been calling her Frankenbuild. Right. Um, Hera is a, a little bit more lovely. Yeah, you know, again, I'm, I'm going to have to come up with a new name once we have the chip in the motherboard to drop in. Yeah, so. so Juan and I were actually talking a little bit off camera about uh, just upgrading a chip or if you always kind of upgrade your chip and motherboard together. And I am of the same opinion as you that yeah. I feel like I wait so long that to me, I always do the chip and motherboard together. Totally. Well, I, don't, don't you always go just into in it? In my mind, that's how the, it works. The, you know, the great thing about PC building is once I put my system together, in a, in a year or two, I can just, you know, drop in a oh, new yeah. CPU. You know. And then I go like four years right. and my chipset's been discontinued, so I just have to get a new motherboard anyway. I've just started linking those two together. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can I can I can go a couple gen on a power supply. Mm -hmm. um, I'm swapping out GPUs a little bit more aggressively than yep. back in the day. Obviously, yep. those things are definitely uh, uh, bigger um, bigger impact on performance there. But you know, hard drives. I still have a crazy old like two terabyte hard drive, just as dumb mass storage. That that can Why not? go into the next build. It's still got a little life left in it too. I mean, if you've got all those video files from editing and everything like that, it's nice to just have that. Yeah, a good dead space for it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For so, sure. so those kinds of things make sense, but anymore, yeah, I've kind of given up on this notion that like, oh, well, I'm going to invest and I'll future proof with I... this motherboard. And that way for like a couple chips, I mean, like, yep. I'm not flipping my processor every I year. I know. Can I'm I just, just tell you how much when I'm uh, putting together components for a build, I think about future proofing and then never actually make use on all that stuff I was future proofing for. No. Um, but that's just my build style. If you are someone that future proofs <laughs> and then makes good use of it, please let us know. We would love to hear it. You're, you're probably doing um, better at this. You're doing better than we are. Than we are. All right, so let's change gears a little bit yeah, let's shift it up. and talk about something near and dear to my heart. Now, this is something that the New Egg Ninja team was like, hey, we should talk about this with Halloween coming up next week uh, because it is costume adjacent, <laughs> I will say, cosplay. Hello. And I kind of say it like that because there is a difference between costume and cosplay. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into a little bit about what that is. First of all, Juan, have you ever cosplayed? Uh, no. Okay. Not, not, not officially. So That's again, okay. like, because this is this is this is what I, I I feel like you will do a much better job of breaking down. <laughs> let me let me just mansplain to you for a quick second how, how cosplay <laughs> works here, Trish. Um, no, it, it's it's like, I think a lot of us have tried to do, have tried to make costumes for events or for Halloween mm -hmm. or for things like that of uh, of properties that we're passionate about. Totally. Right. You know, like there was That's that awesome. whole whole stretch of my childhood where it's like. You just saw me getting taller, but it was the same Star Trek The Next Generation command uniform with all of the, the Playmates props and stuff. Like, uh, it just I like, love it. My mom would help me make those costumes, and they would just keep awesome. getting taller and skinnier as I grew up. That's different than trying to develop the movie accurate or, f or, or, or show accurate presentation of that kind of fandom. So I've, I've come like... I've put a lot of love into some costumes. Yeah. I don't know that I would ever say that what I had created was a cosplay. So I think the best way to think of it um, when you're talking about kind of the difference between the two is uh, that cosplay is usually thought of as a performance art. Okay. So there's a lot more involved in the presentation than there is in just putting on a costume. Okay, that makes um, sense. So cosplay, the word, comes from costume play, and it was cosplay was a term that was coined in Japan in 1984 as a name for fan costuming at sci-fi conventions, which was something that was very prevalent then. There's also an element of cosplay is really something that's done celebratory at an event. So I would actually say your costume closer that, had, to that, than... that had evolved over the years yeah. 
if you were to have worn that at a fan event for a specific property, I would say it totally qualifies so as cosplay. The, the one time I made it to a Star Trek convention, I actually got close. Well, yes, I, I, okay. I would I was... say yes. Now, there are Excellent. fuzzy definitions all <laughs> over the internet of what constitutes cosplay. Some people say it's only self-made costumes. In fact, Wikipedia says it's a performance art using self-made costumes. Dictionary.com says it's just dressing up as a character from a movie book or Come video on, game, especially in manga or anime. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of questions and a lot of people have differing opinions if it's self-made or bought. Um, and then there's, there's such a thing called closet cosplay, which I think is how okay. a lot of people get started. And it's taking things from your closet and then maybe altering them or adding to them in some way to make them more like the character you're portraying. Um, I like to say that cosplay kind of includes all of those things because I ha I, I believe that it has more to do with a respect for the property yeah. and for the craft uh, more than you would find at a typical Halloween party. Not to say that you know when you, you roll up to Spirit people... in like the gutted remnants of a Radio Shack and right. like just walk out with like a plastic paper mache thing. Well, and we were talking about this before. I'm uh, my tiny human is going as Batman this year, and I wanted a casual, easy to wear Batgirl to wear with him. Not a cosplay, right. just an easy to wear costume. Um, but of course, Spirit just gave me like sexy Batman corset and yeah. called it Batgirl. Um, so it's it's just it's a very different thing, and it's all in the name of fun. So uh, you know, not not to say that one's more serious than another. Um, I, I just feel like there's different end goals in mind. So there's a lot of motivations for people to cosplay from people who love creating costumes, yeah. from people who love building props, people who are just really passionate about a character and want to become that character. And you see a lot of gender reversed cosplays yeah. for this reason. Like, you know, I what if I grew up always wanting to be Superman? And not Wonder Woman, but someone would tell me that because I, you know, am physically a certain way, I have to be this character. No, damn it, maybe I want to be Superman, and you can do a gender well, reverse version you, of that. You, you can do something interesting too, where there there are these like the the in, you know because in the world of comics and entertainment, you have like a Bat Girl, right? You don't have a Bat woman. You don't have a super woman. We could get a into a whole discussion girl. about girl versus I, woman used in comics. I have a daughter. I'm having yeah, trouble finding. Because we, we actually had this conversation while yeah. we were doing prep for some of this. Like, even just finding some fun things mm -hmm. for my daughter in the world of comics and stuff. Like, I can always find an endless supply of unicorns and sassy girl t-shirts. Right. But, like, I have to go over to the boys section and pull, like, a Captain America shield. Because she thinks Cap is cool. She likes yeah. Iron Man. Like, she still wants to sport this stuff too. And we did actually have that conversation with her when she went to put on her robot shirt with R2-D2 and C-3PO and said, but boys like robots. And you're like, oh, but you do too. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I will say I saw one of the best Wonder Woman cosplays of my life at San Diego Comic-Con this year done by a guy and done as a male version. And it was so, so well done with like male Roman armor, but the same color and the same like cut of the, uh, it was Wonder Woman from the new DC films. Nice. Um, it was really, really I'm, well done. I'm really um, wondering if we're gonna see a gender swap on the new Doctor Who. See some guys showing up in the trench totally. coat with like the high waters. I would say 100% right? yes, but in general, <laughs> with cosplay, Sorry. you usually see more care um, given to details and accuracy yeah. and the creation and portrayal and kind of respect for the fandom. Whereas Halloween, it's kind of it, just for fun, so there's like a different level of respect there. I mean, if you were to wear your cosplay that you spent, you know, a hundred hours plus making and thousands of dollars on materials, and then someone spills a drink on your <laughs> right. super expensive cape, that would understandably be a frustrating experience. Or people that are playing really with sad. your very expensive 3D printed sword replicas <laughs> for your cosplay, that would make you frustrated. So it might be a better choice for a Halloween party to go with something that's just a little bit more in the spirit of I'm having a good time tonight and a little less um, yeah, we have, detail oriented. Because like, I hadn't considered the notion of that being sort of a notion of performance art. So that makes a lot more yeah. sense now. But you would want like like more party functional versus yeah. performance <laughs> right. art functional for your normal Halloween shindig. Like I read a really good article from a cosplayer who had built, an, a female cosplayer who had built an amazing Hellboy costume uh, or cosplay. She built a really, really completely herself made, uh, like foam, fist, everything, really cool, awesome makeup. 
and thought, oh man, I'm gonna kill it at the Halloween contest this year, and entered her Hellboy cosplay, like did the whole thing in Halloween contest, and lost to like a guy in a Green Lantern bathrobe because he was funny. <laughs> um, so it's different things are valued <laughs> when it comes to different these criteria. different things. Yes, exactly. Nor would I. Nor would I recommend that Green Lantern bathrobe guy enter a cosplay contest. Right. Now, that not, not to say that people can't go all out with their Halloween costumes and have the same level of respect or that people can't put together something more casual and enter a cosplay contest and do really well because there are a lot of things that are well, involved. I would imagine there. that there's probably some healthy overlap, especially totally. if, like, if, if you're saying that, like, for the cosplay, if a part of that is... Is, is making like, um, like uh, creating your cosplay around some sort of absurdity or a pun or a joke or something like that. that there's, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's still probably a category of that. A tons of or, that, because it's all, it's all about creativity and love of whatever the property is. Um, and when it comes to you know the self-made cosplay versus purchase things, you reach a level, at least for me, I reached a level with cosplay where I just realized I am not as wonderful as a prop maker as some people who I'm lucky enough to know here in Los Angeles. So sometimes then a cosplay will be worked on by multiple craftsmen. Um, so you might have a leather worker do the leather pieces, a prop builder help with certain prop aspects, um, a seamstress work on the costume. And it's really, there are cosplay contests where a team of people will enter for one cosplay. Um, and kind of the fun thing about cosplay is these are, fictional characters. These are things that exist in our entertainment and in our imagination. So trying to bring them to real life is a challenge. Um, so, you know, that's where you get the people that are like, well, if you just bought it out of a spirit Halloween bag, does that count as cosplay? And I, I'm a little more lenient on that. I would say if you bought it from a spirit Halloween bag, but were like, eh, this mask isn't right. Let me just alter that a little or let me fix the patch on this or let me, you know, and, and you still were involved in the creative process somehow or a closet cosplay where you're pulling different things from your closet and kind of altering them to make them look more like how you see this character represented. I would argue that that's all different levels of cosplay yeah. um, because I think people see very professional cosplay and are intimidated to get into it um, when really it's just a hobby and it's just people having a great time and showing their love of fandom, specifically at fandom events. So I say, you know, from all levels, amateur on, you're all welcome, go to it if you... Is there is there some notion of like tiers? There are in a lot of cosplay contests. So if you okay. wanna be competitive, and being competitive is, you know, it doesn't it's have like, to, you don't have to compete for it to be called cosplay. Competitive is just another fun level. I was gonna say, that, that sounds like it's that. just another specific niche of it the is. whole, yeah. And a lot of them have uh, different levels of competition from amateur to professional um, with different criteria at each different event that you go to. Or, like, I don't compete when I go. I just go to have fun. Right. I just like, you know, if I'm going to go as Tifa Lockhart for the day. I just like being Tifa Lockhart for the there day. Because that's how I wanted to roll for that <laughs> Comic-Con. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you have, I've seen some amazing cosplays put together with staples and a glue gun. Nice. Because that's the level that people were at when they put it together and it still looked awesome and right. made out of cardboard. And I feel like with every cosplay you do, you challenge yourself to take on a new skill well, or a new challenge. Because it is. It should be like an evolving art. Yes, exactly. And I have done the same cosplay numerous times where I upgrade little things in it each time I do it because I find kind of what I liked or didn't like, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, when when you decide to go super professional, then you can kind of bring in the other professional people. But it's it's whatever you like. It's whatever's going to make you feel happy. Um, so that was my first experience with cosplayers was working on a was? web series where it was like uh, live action, but they were supposed to be these little action here, uh, kind of like a Toy Story, okay. but it was live action. And uh, from the first season to the second season that we were working on the show, they brought in a different team of prop and costumers, cool. and they were more sort of cosplay style. And I, I was completely unfamiliar with this milieu, with this world. Oh God, people are so talented. Seeing that change in details, in props, in even just like the sturdiness of some of these like action hero style mm -hmm. uh, costuming was was absolutely incredible. So it's, it's like, really cool. okay, so this is a lot different than just like 
making a fun costume and kind of showing up and showing off. Like there, there is something happening here. And I've been noticing that for a lot of people, especially here in LA. So we live in like sort of Hollywood central. Everyone's Where people a are part so of the industry talented. in some way. You, you're seeing that though, like yeah. from 3D printing to mm -hmm. amazing uh, seamstress work to mm -hmm. uh, just some incredible design that this is, again, it's like an emerging art form or, or a more popularizing art form that is having an impact on traditional media content and broadcast. Right. Um, and so uh, I know that they, uh, we've been talking about kind of my cosplay history, so everyone had asked me to bring in kind of some, some of my history and to share with you guys. And the second I like to guys. call, she brought it from home. I brought it from home. Um, but I really started out using my costume uh, shop classes from college where I studied theater <laughs> and using my very rudimentary seamstress skills to put together some stuff. So if you want to toss to my computer, I can show you some of my early stuff and you can kind of see how it's progressed and the different things I've worked on in that time. Now, I am by no means a professional cosplayer. I do not compete. I just do it for fun. I think it's a great time. Um, so what I have up on my screen right now is uh, a very early Shay from Game of Thrones. Okay. Um, so her, a lot of the dresses that, uh, that she wears in that series are just kind of draped fabric. So it was a very, very easy early build where if I got things a little incorrect, that was okay. That was Makeup okay. is not overly complicated since I'm not a professional makeup artist. I'm not doing special effects or anything like that. Um, and that same con, I did a uh, Daenerys <laughs> as... And, and uh, th this is the other thing. Cosplay now has such a crazy world of cosplay photographers. And yeah. I did not do any of that when I started. So you can see like my photo of my uh, Daenerys as Khaleesi cosplay yeah. is just a picture that I met George R. R. Martin and was like, yo! <laughs> and we took a picture together. So that's the photo I have of that cosplay. It is not a professional photo shoot. Um, and that's another one that I made myself very easily and I chose that character because specifically when she is uh, riding with the Dothraki, her outfits are very rugged. Yeah. So if I didn't have straight seams, okay. if I messed yeah. up, that was all okay. That was part of the look. Um, so that kind of went into planning that. Um, after that, I did my Tifa Lockhart, <laughs> um, which this was a closet cosplay, and I think we might even show a video of kind of how I made this after. But this was a very early, like, let me take some things from my closet and see what I can do to best represent this character. So I did Tifa. This is a picture of Tifa without the wig. In the video, I had a wig because she actually has really long, dark hair. But I ended up liking the look of it a lot better okay. with my natural hair than I did with the wig, even though the wig was kind of more accurate. It could just be that my wig styling skills still need a lot of work. Could be. And that's why I prefer <laughs> natural hair. But these are all things you work about. So this next one is Copperhead from Batman Arkham Origins. Um, Copperhead in the nice. comics is traditionally a male, but in Arkham Origins, this is uh, that Copperhead's daughter. Um, and this was my first time working with leather. Okay. So my challenge for this build, and wig styling, my challenge for this build was wig styling, which didn't come out exactly how I wanted it. Um, the actual character has like undercut, and I didn't really oh, know yeah. how to do that with a wig, so I kind of razor the best that I could on the sides. Um, and then working with leather, I broke so many needles. <laughs> trying to make this happen, but I feel like the product overall came out pretty well. That it was, was something I was happy with. Um, and I did end up enlisting the help of a makeup artist to do the tattoo that's on the neck for her. Um, I tried to do it myself a couple times and just in a mirror wasn't getting it right. And I tend to be a stickler about details. So it's driving me crazy. Um, so this next one is a character named Agatha from the mobile game Clash of Kings. Okay. And uh, this was actually in collaboration with the game. I made a YouTube video about how I made this cosplay. But this was my first time since college doing any patterning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the seams are not super straight. It, I don't think that's, it lies completely symmetrical on that's, both that's sides. That's why we have a head to, head, to, head to toe wide shot. It's, uh, but looks, I looks did the best me. that I could. And I have to say, I think every time I've worn this cosplay, it's fallen apart a little bit more, awesome. which is like the telltale sign of I made it myself cosplay, um, but I'm not a professional. And uh, speaking of that, there are now cosplay repair artists that will run around <laughs> conventions and fix people's cosplays for free. This is a real thing. So look on social media before you're attending a con if you're planning on going with a cosplay so that if something falls apart, you know who to text or Man, who to that's, call. That's an amazing like, adaptation for the community. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. So Peggy. then, Yeah, then I did a Peggy. Um, so they actually sell her exact fedora. Mm -hmm. So I purchased the fedora. I did not make it. Um, and I found 
a vintage era blue suit. So it's not nice. exactly her suit, but it's from the era, which I thought was really cool. So those were two things that were purchased for it's this like cosplay. She would have worn a suit like this. Right, yeah. and th so that really made me feel more like the character to be wearing a suit from that era. I made the blouse underneath, which you can tell because the seams are super not straight. I can't um, tell from there. It's, on, <laughs> it's on a live stream. If you didn't bring it up, I'm, no, I don't think anyone yep. would have caught yep. that. Yep, it's the best I could do. Uh, and then I did Ray. Oh, I've seen your Ray, yeah. Yeah, then I did Ray. This is a little bit of a faraway shot, so you can't see the detail in the costumes too much. Um, but the staff for Ray was all 3D printed, which is awesome and looks super accurate, um, distressed and painted and all that kind of stuff. Like, looks super cool. It is so heavy. Really? So when it comes to practicality for conventions, not only is it very difficult to run around with all day, uh, but it actually might not pass weapons check because if you smack someone with it, it would really hurt. That would hurt. Um, yeah. So that's something to consider too. Uh, and then I kind of learned from that with my cosplays <laughs> after that. So this is a funny one. So this was uh, the first San Diego Comic Con oh, I went to. the family that cosplays together stays together. Right, but you can see you can see the things that uh, we messed up a little bit on. So when we made the headpiece for Baby Groot, his head was a lot smaller yeah. than it was come Comic Con because babies heads grow. grow really fast. Really fast. Uh, so it just kind of sat on top of his head like a hat instead of going all the way down. Um, and there were uh, the jacket for uh, Star Lord was definitely purchased. Although uh, my vest was made with help of a seamstress and professional customer friend of mine because I wanted to make a Gamora vest that was also breastfeeding accessible. Oh, hey, oh, moms at cons. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is all the fun in cosplay. Um, and I had a, I was airbrushed to get all the green. And what I didn't care for, if I were going to do it again, is the airbrushed face. I think I came out a little bit more like She-Hulk in the face. Oh, I Then Gamora. So I would yeah. want more beauty makeup in the face next time I did it. But I thought the muscles in the body paint looked really good. Yeah. So again, you learn every time you do. Um, speaking of, this is kind of taking it back. This was the first Wonder Woman I ever did. Um, and I took inspirations from old Roman leather armor and that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can kind of see uh, like the am more amateurish lines in the leather work. Sure. Um, because, you know doing the best it can, and uh, the bracers and the tiara leave a bit to be desired. Um, uh, update to, to, to my today. more recent <laughs> Wonder Woman. Um, and uh, now, but this I can say, I obviously don't have that level of leatherworking capabilities on my own as a craftsman. So uh, the bodice, the bracers, and the boots for this cosplay um, are actually sold by a company called UD Replicas, which okay. does really, really nice armor work, DC armor work specifically, and uh, mostly for men. Hmm. So if you want any Dark Knight suits, anything like that, they do really, really great work. It's all in a limited number, so it's not mass produced. It's, it's super attention to detail for everything. Um, and then I had a prop builder friend of mine help with the God Killer set the sword and the shield, and uh, the leather harness, and the lasso, and then the tiara and armbands, I, uh, the tiara I had 3D printed, and the armband is just foam so that it's comfortable. Um, but this was just taken outside of San Diego Comic-Con, and then I'll just fast forward one more rendition of it to a more professional photo shoot. <laughs> hey, I like never do those. This was the first one I did, so I was really excited to kind of get that cinematic quality and feel to the photo shoot because again that's not something I've done with my cosplay before but again taking it to the next level taking it to the next level so yeah that's I mean that's kind of cosplay is this evolving really fun process and I feel like a really cool way to show your passion for a given property and express yourself artistically through costume work yeah totally. it's really fun and I I mean also as a theater kid of course I'm not totally. really drawn to cosplay like I feel like most theater kids are like, Halloween! Because even for theater, for the same we reasons. would always be like, how could we like make this movie on stage? Mm -hmm. like, how could we take like a Tarantino film and make it into a, th a theater show or yeah. something like that? I always feel like, because I, I, you know, Lex is getting a little bit bigger, like I missed my window to do the Ripley power loader robot suit. You did not. I, I, like, I still want to see if we can pull that off. I think you should. But I don't have a lot of time left because kids grow. She's getting big. I, I so. think you can make it happen. Yeah. I really want to dress Marie up as the alien queen. 
Yes. That I'll would be, be the power so good. Loader, yes. Then we could have like a big old fight. That would be so good. One of my bucket list cosplays that I'm going to do sometime is uh, Krang from the old Ninja Turtles cartoon, where my face is the brain and I want the entire upper portion of the body to be built <laughs> above me. So I'm you. huge. And I feel like I'm short enough to pull that you off. You could totally do that because his legs were also really stumpy. The robot yes. had really odd proportions. You could yeah. totally make I'm that. I'm totally going to do a Krang at some point. Oh, that um, would make me so happy. Right? My other bucket list cosplay is a Jessica Rabbit, which I've seen people do good Jessica Rabbits, but I'm such a stickler for attention to detail that I don't want to do it if I can't do it completely accurate to the source, which might mean that I never do it because she's a cartoon and yeah. physics. And physics. Like, that's just not <laughs> how bodies work. No. Um, and I have tried. I have invented different, like, metal contraptions to go in the dress to try to make it work, and I have failed so many times. But... Maybe someday it'll happen. Maybe someday. My friend Meg actually did a really good Jessica Rabbit, but even with that, it was a corset, so it wasn't as low-backed as her dress. Oh, okay. It was a kind of low-backed corset, but I was like, not as accurate as I'd like. Yeah, the Again, engineering I'm a stickler. on that would be... The engineering tricky. on that is a little... I'm like, like can I do like a, like a thigh holster that has <laughs> metal boning that goes all the way up the front? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Someday, <laughs> maybe. Um, but to give you guys an idea of the kind of work that usually goes into making these kind of cosplay <laughs> costumes, uh, I have a video for my YouTube channel from a few years ago. This is one of my earlier ones that I showed you, that Tifa cosplay, where I documented all the work that went into that Tifa Final Fantasy design. Now keep in mind that this is a very beginner level, amateur style closet cosplay. And this is something that's achievable for people who are just getting started with the hobby. In fact, I didn't sew at all. I used fabric tape for everything. It became like the joke of that video in the comments was take a shot every time she uses fabric tape or hashtag sponsored by fabric tape. It was not, but it's because I was scared to sew with my sewing machine. So with that in mind, let's, let's take a look at that. Now for what that purse is for. See that sweet hardware? Yeah, that's gonna be armor. Cut it out off the purse, and I'm gonna use double-sided fabric tape to stick the hardware to the side of the boot. Double-sided fabric tape is a great trick when you don't want to have to stitch through tough things like leather. Let's just put those socks right in there. Now for the gloves. Tifa's gloves need to be the right combination of puffy yet thin enough to show your hands. They're supposed to mimic like boxing gloves, so I chose ski gloves to get just that right balance of thick and thin. You gotta cut off all the fingers, like so, and then the painstaking hand stitching to put all that stuffing right back in the glove. Here we go. I used a Sharpie to color in black the bands around the wrists on the gloves. Next, we've got to take that medical tape and wrap it around. Make sure that you've got the right glove. Then on the other glove, there's a little bit more armor. So we're going to use the same hardware so that everything matches and use that same fabric tape as before so that we don't have to sew through the glove. Now, for those Christmas socks. Yeah, I'm just using them as red fabric because it's cosplay on a budget and easy to do. Cut out a part of the red sock and that's your armband. Now we just need to put some armor on it. So I'm gonna use some of the leather from that purse from Salvation Army with some fabric tape to put the hardware on in exactly the arrangement that I want it. Once it's on there, I'm gonna fold the leather so that it's a little bit thicker and looks a little bit more like an elbow pad. Now it's time to stick it to the armband using, you guessed it, fabric tape.
it's so funny watching that back now well, because that was so trip long down ago. memory lane for you. Yeah, and like you know, I, you know, I'm super critical of my own stuff, so I'm yeah. sitting here going. We got oh, the running commentary that you guys actually probably should have gotten. That belt never this show. hangs right. Oh, I guess and... I did do some stitching on those gloves. And, <laughs> oh, look at that medical tape. And you're like, actually, I think that would have been. Yeah, my my comment years later of all the things that I want to fix still As on you that cosplay. MST3K your own DIY. Totally. Video. Yep. But uh, guys, if you want to see more of that DIY costume or more cosplay videos, I don't do them very often on my YouTube channel, but some of them do live there. So you can I'm check out my channel on YouTube. It's youtubecom slash So, yeah. um, I, you know, like because I I think we've done a pretty good job of just sort of expressing the philosophy of mm -hmm. cosplay. What do you think are someone gonna uh, 2018? Lots of really popular um, characters out, lots of movies that are still continuing to resonate, uh, like Marvel and DC, things like that. Yeah. What do you think are gonna be some of uh, some of like the new video game breakout um, cosplay I've stars? I love seeing so many 2Bs from Near Automata. Okay. Or Near Automata. I've had people online ah. uh, correct me in both directions. I saw a great data um, war. Yep, um, from you're gonna see some yeah. great, great data wars for sure. Uh, new Lara Croft Tomb Raider stuff for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been very lucky that there have been a lot of great games um, this year to pull from, so I think that we're gonna see a lot of that. Characters from PS4 Spider-Man, oh, yeah. for sure. Especially with the, because that's a built-in, like the uniform mechanic on Spider-Man is mm -hmm. already like prime for that. And there are so many places that make really good Spider-Man suits. Totally. Um, if you're if you're daunted and you think you know I really want to go pro level but I don't know that I can make that myself, there's some really good again like smaller costume shops that specialize specialize in cosplay clientele that will give you that detail. That being said, they are not cheap. Yeah. You are paying for that level of craftsmanship, but, but it's the, really beautiful. I need the functional web slingers, like the real ones okay. that can really go swinging. Well, uh, you know what? We could find someone in LA to make <laughs> yeah, that I'm happen sure for we you. Could. I like believe. With the actual like air compressed grappling yes. hooks. Yes. Um, you think we'll see a Venom? You think Venom is going to make it after It'd be the film? So did you well. See, did you see the movie? I haven't seen it yet. I have not seen it because okay. many of my trusted friends in the comic book world, like went, now that uh, I can't see every uh, Marvel and DC film as they come out because of tiny human reasons. Right. I, the Did ones I. that I choose to get a babysitter for and go to opening weekend are more few and far between. Um, so I have a lot of movies that get relegated to the, eh, when it comes out on demand list. Yeah. And Venom it's has moved that. to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because of people's opinions of it. But I remember from the trailers being really excited about the special effects that I thought Venom looked super cool. Uh, so it would be interesting to see people try to pull it off. And there's some makeup artists that might be able to do like that really cool liquid symbiote uh, thing. That might that like might I think be with neat. like with like some fluids, you know, like like if we could get thermal mic to get us like some thermal mic build one of venom cosplay. I think no, I think I like I really think we, you could like have controls that like like move fluids yeah. through different like tendrils and stuff. I think I think it could work. I think it could, um, but again, I still need to finish my my aliens power loader concept. You can make it happen. I really want to do. I mean, just from seeing someone do you. it in cardboard once, like I think I could do that. And you could do it in cardboard, and then that would be fine too. No, but I. Okay, anyway. Yes. Um, so, so that's cosplay. Hey. <laughs> that Thank very you. short discussion we just had. <laughs> Thank you for your perspective into the culture from our resident uh. expert, Trisha. No, actually, seriously, that was, that was, a, that was a great deep dive into uh, getting, getting started in the world of cosplay. Yes, I always like to pull new people in. Like, come join us. It's a lot of fun. Why not join us? Join us. Why yes, not us? 100%, yes. Um, so it's it's always a good time to talk about cosplay and bring people in. And speaking of fun and good times, yeah, coming up next, I like good times. Let's transition. We're gonna go you hands like on times. with one of the biggest games of the month, Soul Calibur Six. So while we get up, well, while we get set up, go ahead and check out this trailer. Boom. In this world. Everyone lives by the sword. Most dwell in its shadow. But there are still a few. Oh, God's. Reflect its honor. To end you! 
follow the path of legends or forge a new story. You shall be sacrificed to the human race. Our choices are infinite. But our destiny is defined. Soul Caliber 6. Soul Caliber 6! The latest edition of the popular 3D fighting, fighting franchise just came out a couple weeks ago. PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. And you can buy whatever version you want on Newegg.com. So hey. we have it here on the PS4. I think we're gonna we're gonna dive in now. Um, of course, we, we have it on the PS4 because uh, we wanted to make sure that she was as handicapped <laughs> as possible by giving her an unfamiliar controller. Um, we're not gonna dig into the the cosplay mode of Soul Calibur. No, and although, the character creation tag. although that being said, uh, I've seen some amazing oh. Soul Calibur cosplays in my time. And if you want a very fun look at a super lo-fi, I think you are player two. So I think you have to hit options now. I'm wondering if maybe my controller just died. Oh, maybe. Uh, if, if you want to see a very like lo-fi reenactment of the OG Soul Calibur cinematic intro, I just did a collaboration with Gerard the Completionist. If you guys know uh, Gerard, he's amazing. Where I got to play Taki in the, in the cinematic opening. So Again, very lo-fi, very funny. I know, I did it already, and I can control player one. Yeah, but when I jumped back in, I think it kicked you off. Or did okay. you not? It did. Why am I not? Is that you? That's you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can't figure out how to get two players on this, we'll show you guys uh, character player, creation. And that'll be great. Okay, you're, you, I think you're taking the wheel, Trish. And you want me to take the wheel? Or am I, or are you? Here, let's see. No, I think you got it. Yeah, because I've been hitting options and it's not doing it. We're doing it live, folks. We're doing it live. And Those actually, reverses. we were both playing before player the show player. in the training mode, just one player. So we didn't test out both controls. Start versus. And. Player one, I'm gonna options. hit options. Great. Now and you hit nothing options. is happening. And we can't do it. It's broken. Oh, hold on. It's totes broke. All right, now at least I'm. Uh... Okay, so try and go to New Egg Social. Now hit that. Now hit options. Yeah. Logging in. I fixed it. Okay, well um, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be talky. Okay. You, yeah, you can be. You can be. I want to be the right skeleton there? that I made in the character creation. Oh, look at that. Um, this is a female skeleton. You can tell because of the jaunty hip um, that she juts out to the side. Oh, that's male, how you can tell. Male skeletons stamps. stand up straight. Okay. And uh, female skeletons apparently have scoliosis. Okay, cool, cool. Just FYI. Well, I mean. You might not know about You these can't things, be Trisha, too hard so. on Soul Calibur body <laughs> stances and physics in general. It was hilarious, like, doing the skeleton for character creation, because, like, nothing applies. Like, body type. Uh, okay. I want a really big skeleton. I mean, does your hip bones spread apart if no. you do wider hips or anything like uh, that? You, you, you even change, like, the skull. Oh, like, you're just getting right in there, huh? Yep. And. She can't do anything. My character creation skills are no, not yeah, good. No, yeah, what happened to your person? Oh! Wow! Dag, Sometimes yo. Sometimes that happens. Man. Uh, that was not the ending move I was intending to do, <laughs> but I'm not mad at it. Oh, she's like super slow. I did not do well. Here, I'm just gonna back up and let you play around with moves for a little oh, bit. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. What you got? No, 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 like, I'm even just trying to get my blocks down, dang. Your blocks should be X. No! Ah! Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so we might, we might wanna switch to 
You want a different character? I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to, yeah, because I, th I think you, you, you need to kill me one more time, and then we can do this. Let's try. Oh, no! Haha, -ha, you're not gonna get a perfect this time. There you go, that's right. Look at that, skeleton lady. You just electrocuted me. Stay down. Oh, wait, that's you. That's me. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, is it going to be? It, it might be a, a actual fight. Oh! oh. <laughs> See, guys. So, I, so I spent all my time on the character creation. I didn't actually like do anything with her moveset or <laughs> her fighting One. style or capabilities. So I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh! Yeah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, that one kind of hurt. Not dead yet, though. What if I just, like, jumped right off a level? That'd be so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> After that sweet, super fancy yeah, move, right. and then I just jump right off the Whee! platform. And you're down. Yeah! <laughs> All right, let me, let me, let me try someone, someone else here. <laughs> Humph for farewell. Humph. You lose. All right, I'll pick someone different this time too. I'll do Ivy uh, because I saw a friend of mine who I used to work with back in the day at the Escapist. You got to do the character uh, selection. Liana Kersner cosplayed one of the most amazing Ivies I've ever seen in my entire life. Right on. Right. Come on. Best of three. Oh, we're doing best of three. So I'm already down one. Okay. So um, I am woefully unfamiliar with the world of, let's see. No, I want this, I want OG colors on Ivy. Uh, let me try Siegfried. So the Ivy cosplay I saw done was actually a uh, nude colored body stocking over most of it with this fabric cover to it. So yeah, while that... from far away it looked super nudie, it was actually one of the most covered up modest cosplays <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. I was gonna say, like, I, it, <laughs> to do that really game accurate, I feel would be a dangerous functional. Well, you know, everyone makes their own decisions as to their <laughs> comfort levels. Uh, but I really liked Liana's because it was so foolproof. She was not about to have any kind of wardrobe malfunction, malfunction because right. she was essentially in a that's full phrase, body suit. That's the phrase <laughs> I was trying to come up with, wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, she was essentially in a full body suit. Oof. <laughs> that was amazing. So, I'm not good with I know, I'm trying to figure out what. Ah, uh, dang it. What all Ivy's moves are. Oh, no! Sir! Oh! Didn't like that. I tried to block it and it didn't happen for me. Duh! All right. I got closer. Woo! I gotta play more defensively with him. Let's see. I know. I'm really, I'm really bad at playing defense. In case you haven't learned that, my fight style in games is always. See, and that's the thing. I, like, I keep mistiming his wind up. Whoa. Oh. You've got a long reach with him. <laughs> Not when I'm backed into a corner. I don't. <laughs> there we go. Man. Woo! I am not great at the soul calibers. You used to be though, right? Didn't you, what was your oh, uh, no. save soul caliber? Uh, like I, I kind of stopped with two. Now were you a soul caliber in the arcades kind of dude? Yeah, I, I, so again, even then, Ooh, very limited me. practice time. Man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yes. Ma'am! Oh, no! No! Come on! No! Oh, Come I'm gonna on. die. This is it. Yeah. Oh. oh, man! And I just ran right into your whip. And I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close! Ah. Uh. 
Now I feel like for the rest of the afternoon, we're just going to memorize moves. Yeah, this is what always happens on this show. It's like, so uh, after after we're done, um, we get much better at the game than Everyone at home is like, yeah, yeah, sure, you no, guys do. do. No, but well, we do. We dedicate I, more time to the game after the show than Proof prior to the show. Proof is our two weeks playing Overcooked. Oh, and then, yeah, how much better? Because, okay. like, we were way better round two on Overcooked. That's so like, 100 I, I feel true. like we, we at least vindicated Practice ourselves Practice is there. better, and I always get like the grossest sweaty gaming hands, so I'm just wiping oh, off I'm, this I'm controller like, before Anyone I who uses this app in the eye, uh, I feel bad for them. The grossest. Son. Um, uh, so we're coming up on the end of the show. Before we sign <laughs> off, there are a few mm -hmm. more Newegg Now deals we want to make sure you guys don't miss out on. If yes. you're looking for a new gaming chair, you can check out the, the, the ga uh, Gamdias Achilles. Uh, Gamdias is the, is the brand that I'm sitting in here right now. The Achilles that's on sale today is an RGB gaming chair. RGB all RGB the things. everything. So yeah, you heard that right. Mm -hmm. It's got lights and you can pick it up right now for $120 off. That's a good deal. You can also choose from red, white, blue, or black. So check that deal out on the page. Yes, and before we wrap up today, we should probably recap some of those full system deals that we mentioned at the start of the show. Oh, totally. So um, the very popular MSI G, uh, GS65 Stealth mm -hmm. Thin, gaming laptop with sleek design, serious power, a 144 hertz display, GTX 1070 GPU, a Gen i7 CPU, you can pick this beauty up, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful powerhouse up for Our two. Beauty. $150 off. Yeah, it's a nice one. Beauty and Braun. We also have the Aero 15X from Gigabyte with a 4K display and a GTX 1070 for $150 off today. Or if you're an ROG fan, we have the Asus ROG Strix Hero, Hero Edition, <coughs> excuse me, with a 120 hertz display and a GTX 1060 GPU for $150 off. See, that's what that's what happens mm. when you celebrate too much after it kicking is. my ass in Soul Calibur. <laughs> and how about some some great pre-built gaming yep. desktops? We've got the ABS BattleBox mm. Ultimate Extreme, <laughs> a beastly system, a Core i9 7920X CPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, an Asus ROG GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, mm -hmm. high-end gaming system, and you can get it right now for $100 off. Yes, and you should also probably check out the ABS Fleet, which has an i7-8700K CPU and a 1080 Ti, available for $50 off on that Newegg Now page. Beautiful, okay, so that's gonna do it for Newegg Now this week. Remember, you can still take advantage of all the deals, newegg.com slash Newegg Now for the rest of the day today or while supplies last. I wanna thank uh, thank, a big thank you to everyone out there watching this week. Yep. As always, a major thank you to the uh, to the New Egg Ninjas here for helping us keep this stream looking smooth, looking good. Thank you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, we we enjoy our conversations and having you in on them. Um, even when I am terrible at playing a game. And when I'm choking. Uh, so join us back here next week when we'll be kicking off New Egg's like Black literally. November. <laughs> Black November, that's a thing here. Yes. Uh, starting next week with a little help from Corsair, so make sure that you tune in. This has been New Egg Now, and now you know. Bye, guys. Bam. Bam.